So I've changed my expression web settings as shown in the previous video and I've opened it and it's defaulted to a new document uh, based on those settings and I'm using the split view so we can see the code at the top and this is uh, this is the uh, the definition for an HTML5 document. Notice it doesn't actually have the version in it which previous versions version 4 etc uh, did uh, but the page is blank. If you want to create another new page you can just use the button at the top left as you would do in Word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a page and we're going to have a look at uh, what's going on while we do that. So the bottom half of the page in my split view is the design view. You could do this in just in design view um, in a, uh, if you wanted to do that but it's useful to see what's going on. I don't think you can really truly learn how to create web pages without knowing a little bit of the code. <coughs> so when you're creating a web page there's two things you need to uh, think about. First of all there's the HTML. Now HTML stands for Hypertext uh, Markup Language, you don't really need to know that, <coughs> but the, what that does is it defines the structure of the page. So it tells the browser what elements it contains, so this is a heading, this is a subheading, this is a paragraph etc. And then we also have something called CSS uh, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets which will be in a later video which tells the browser what each of those things looks like. So a heading uses this font and is this colour, uh, a paragraph uses that font and is that colour. So we'll have a look at both of those things. So the style and the a structure can be treated kind of separately and sometimes that's useful because if you want to lay out your page slightly differently for say a mobile phone then you can have the same structure with headings paragraphs etc and have different styles based on the size or the orientation of the screen so um, what I would do um, what I normally do is I use the bottom section the design section to actually type in uh, the text so what I'm going to have is my main heading um, in fact, I've selected the wrong bit there, so click in here. So I'm going to have my main heading, and then I'm going to have a subheading, and then I'm going to have a paragraph. And at the moment, if you click on these things in the uh, design view, we see there's a little tag or a little label at the top left that tells us what these things are. Now, these tell us that these are all P, and P, short for paragraph, what it's actually telling us is the HTML tag for that particular element. So if we look at the top, notice that um, we've got these things in triangular brackets. So the triangular brackets are um, HTML tags, and they tell the browser what to do with this information. So it's very much like uh, word processing was in the 80s, if ever, anybody remembers things like WordStar. Um, so P means this is a paragraph, and usually tags appear in pairs, so want to switch on a particular thing and want to turn it off again. So P is the start of the paragraph and slash P is the end of the paragraph. And then so the next P starts uh, a new paragraph. So we've got three uh, paragraphs. There are extra things in here. So um, we've got body. So body is like the main part of the page. Um, so that what you actually see inside the browser window. And again, it has a start and an end. Um, web pages also have a header. Now the header is uh, things that aren't actually displayed on the page. So it includes things like, um, you know, sometimes you have data for um, Google to recognize what the page is and which pages are linked together. You might have things like keywords. You also have things like the title. Now some of the terminology takes a bit of getting used to and we'll look in a future video about the difference between margin and padding. And so one of the first things you need to get used to is the difference between a title and a heading. So a title doesn't appear on the page. If we look at our um, browser, so I'm going to use Chrome here, the title actually appears on the tab. So where it says new tab there, for example, that is where um, the title appears. The heading, on the other hand, does actually appear on the page. And we'll have a look at how to put one of those on in a minute. So I might want to change this um, title, so my first page. So I'm doing this in the code view and that's why I think it's quite useful to have the split view going on. Um, we don't need to worry too much about this other stuff at the top. Um, Expression Web always puts that in for us. It's telling us that the page is in English and it's telling us what character set it's used. So UTF-8 is uh, absolutely fine for um, you know, our alphabet. If you were writing a page in Japanese or uh, Arabic or something, you might need to use a different character set, but um, that's absolutely fine for a European language. Um, so we, we can type in the information that we want to appear on the page, and then what we're going to use, I'm only going to use this 
um, drop down list here so it's a bit like the one at the top of word and again if you don't use the one at the top of the top of word uh, if you use word then it's a good idea to get into that habit because it makes your documents consistent so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my main heading is uh, a heading one now the six sizes of heading one is the biggest and then uh, they get progressively smaller down to six so I'm going to say that my heading is heading style one and my subheading is heading style two my paragraph is already a paragraph we can see that that's there but we can turn other things into paragraphs or stop them being paragraphs if we want to so what I'm doing is I'm using HTML to define the structure of my document I'm going to say it's got a heading and a subheading and a paragraph now there are lots more of these things um, particularly in HTML5 and if you get into it uh, there are things like headers footers uh, articles and other things that sometimes um, help um, you know there's different views in browsers so, so you can um, sometimes browsers have the, that option where it strips away all the styling and makes it easier to read that has different names in different um, settings but um, so um, you can use article for things like that to pick out the key parts so what I've done is I've created the structure so how do we actually turn that into a web page now at the moment it's in expression web so if we save that so uh, we can go to save now I've created a, a folder so I'm going to put it uh, in there so it's on my desktop and I called it a uh, web page so it's already got a picture in there but we won't, we won't worry about that just at the moment now traditionally the first page of your web page or your website is called either default or index so my preference is for index but um, you can call it default if you prefer and the reason for that is if you go to um, a web page if you type in a domain so if we go to my web page for example um, then you might be aware of the structure of web pages so the first part the domain name identifies where the server is and then the bit after the slash identifies the folder and the the file structure so if I don't specify any folder or file like so I've just specified the domain name I still want to um, display a page so what the browser does or the server is it looks for a page called uh, index or default so if I go to uh, if I add index.html notice it's actually the same page so it's just calling it index or default just helps the browser out uh, when you want to come and display that page it means you don't actually need to put the file name in there so I'm going to save that and I'm going to save that in this folder so here's that folder and so that's got my pentagon picture in there uh, but it's also got my index document now so I'm going to open my browser I'm, I'm using Chrome because it's a, a post supposedly the most um, popular browser but it's always a good idea when you're creating a page just to try it in other browsers Firefox Opera um, Edge Internet Explorer etc and just to make sure it appears um, correctly sometimes they have slightly different defaults for things like margins and um, so sometimes you might need to be a little bit careful with the sizing of things and sometimes they display uh, even things like colors uh, slightly differently so to show uh, what this is going to look I'm just going to drag that into Chrome and we can see what my um, page looks like so it's displaying that it's not a very exciting page it's got a white background it's got a black text um, but the um, the structure is there now if you want to look at somebody else's page you might have noticed this option on the the right uh, click menu um, you can look at the, the structure of anybody else's page by clicking the right mouse button and viewing the page source so if you see something and you think oh I wonder how that works I'd like to copy that idea what you can do is you can just go and you can pick out um, some of the elements now depending on how it's been created it might be a bit of a mess or a bit of a jumble in there particularly if you've, um, it's been created by a, a tool um, pages that are hand coded tend to be a bit tidier and easy to read so you can have a look at uh, other pages like so okay so I'm going to go back now and I'm going to um, change my page so I'm going to say paragraph and then I'm going to press enter and I'm going to add another paragraph so I'm going to save that and even though I've saved it so I just use control s so that, um, it hasn't changed the view in the browser so one another thing that you need to get used to when you first start editing web pages is that if you want the change to appear after you've saved it you need to refresh the page so the refresh just fetches another copy reads it again 
uh, displays the contents. So anytime you change your page, you actually want to see it. Uh, refresh, um, you can do that. Um, so looking back at what we've got on the page, we've got, so we've got different elements. Um, notice that it's put them on consecutive lines, but one of the things, another thing that um, some people um, struggle to get the, uh, used to is that if you edit it in the code section, the browser will ignore anything other than the first space. So if I really space this out and do some other strange things uh, like that, notice that it's actually made no difference to the page, the way the page appears in Expression Web. And if I save that and I go to Chrome and refresh, notice that also the page doesn't look any different. And we can go and check the source and see that it has definitely changed. I put all those extra spaces in there. So uh, the point of that is, just like when you're creating a program and it's a good idea to you know, indent loops and uh, if structures, etc. cetera, um, really it's up to you how you structure the code. So structure the code so it's nice and readable for you. It won't make any difference to the final page. So there's not much point in doing that. Sometimes, however, you might want to you might want to do that. There might be cases where you want things to appear like that, and there is a way of doing that. There is a tag. So if we if I change this to pre, pre is short for pre-formatted. So it is possible to do that. And notice that the, the space has now appeared in there. And if I go to Chrome and uh, refresh that page, it does preserve the spacing. So you might have seen quotes and things on web pages. Um, it also changes the format uh, so that the font is, I think that's Courier or something like that. Um, again, that might vary from browser to browser, so it might be worth checking. Um, but we can specify what font to use using CSS, which we'll have a look at in a minute. So that's um, my very brief introduction. We've got all the other features that you might have in a word processor, so I can undo that and I can undo the changes. So I can undo the changes both in the design section and in the code section. Um, but other than that, changes in one should be reflected in the other one. So what I would say is you can um, use quite safely things like bold. And because notice bold is just a simple, a uh, single HTML tag. So um, bold is actually described as strong. And if we do this, so for paragraph, I make that italic, for example, um, EM, short for emphasis. And so that they're quite safe to use. Um, but I wouldn't change these um, fonts and uh, change the sizes uh, using these. Because I'll, I'll show you what happens if you do that. So imagine I want this um, paragraph to be Arial, for example. If I choose Arial from that list there, it creates this style called Auto Style 1. And each time I use these things up there, it will create me a new style called Auto Style plus a number. And it very quickly gets a bit uh, a bit messy and it's a bit difficult to work out um, what's going on. So if you create these styles yourself, you can give them your own name and it becomes much clearer what's going on. So I'm just going to undo that. Okay, so that's my introduction. I would only use this drop down from the top. Um, plus the bold and italic and underlining, although most people don't underline stuff these days. And you can use um, the hyperlink button. So hyperlink works exactly the same as in Word. Um, you highlight it, you click the hyperlink button, and you can put in your tag, uh, your URL, sorry. Um, and the target frame, so you might have noticed when you're using a web page, sometimes you click a link and it replaces the page that you're on. Sometimes it opens in a separate tab, um, so you can choose whether you want it um, in the same window or in a new window for example people don't not use frames these days so i wouldn't worry about those um, so we can do that and inserting a picture you're probably quite safe but for everything else i would use styles which we'll look at in the next video